Hello, how are you doing? It's kind of crazy, isn't it, how quickly we're racing towards the end of 2022, but it means that more Best Books of the Year lists are coming out, and I'm here to talk about another one, because last weekend, the Financial Times published their Books of the Year in the, the newspaper, so there's a whole section of uh, lots of different categories um, where they talk about some of uh, their top reads from the past year, and I'm going to focus on the fiction category. Um, where they've listed their top 10, or are they the top 10? They've kind of cheated. They've put in 11 uh, fiction titles here. Uh, so I'm going to talk about each of these titles, um, if I've read them, if I have any thoughts about them, if I'm interested in reading them, and uh, also discuss a few other titles from their other lists that I'm especially keen on or that I've read and would really recommend as well. So starting off with their first fiction title, uh, which is The Book of Goose by Yi Yun Li. Uh, so this is a novel about female friendship and art and memory uh, over time. And so a woman um, living in America who was born in France, um, her she finds out her French friend has died, and this causes her to reflect upon how they knew each other when they were younger and how her friend really helped her at a, at a time of need. Um, so it's looking at these periods of big um, tumultuous societal change, like through war and uh, conflict, uh, but yeah, also this intimate story of uh, friends. Um, so I've not read this yet, but my husband's read it and um, he really liked it. So yeah, and I, I've read a number of books by Yi Yun Li in the past and I love her writing. I think it is so uh, beautifully precise um, in how she constructs her, her sentences, but also creating these very psychologically rich um, situations uh, to, to write about in her fiction. So still looking forward to this. The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell, uh, a historical novel set in the mid-1500s in Italy uh, following the, the story of a daughter of the Medici family who marries a very wealthy and sinister man and uh, who has designs to, to kill um, his new younger wife. Uh, so following that very dramatic story and I uh, every chance I get I want to show off this, this special Waterstones edition of, of the book I got because it is so beautiful um, with a tiger on the front and there's a there's a lizard on the back, and then on the inside, uh, there's this very dramatic scene, uh, which is just uh, it's so gorgeous, isn't it? The Last White Man by Mohsin Hamid, a novel about a man who wakes up one morning to find his skin has become darker. He doesn't recognize uh, his own reflection in the, the mirror, and this is something that uh, starts occurring to a lot of people uh, across the world. So it's uh, the author's sort of commentary on racial relations and politics and uh, I've not read this book yet, but uh, have read a novel by this author in the past. I, I quite enjoyed it, though it was, you know, very concept heavy. Act of Oblivion by Robert Harris, a historical novel set in the 1600s about a chase and a pursuit of two men that were involved with killing Charles the uh, First. So following that very dramatic story, I've never read anything by Robert Harris before. I think I would really enjoy his, his work. So if you're familiar with him and would recommend this or another of his books to start with, uh, please let me know. Briefly, A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens. This is another historical novel uh, about the female writer George Sand, uh, her lover Frederick Chopin, and George Sand's uh, children, and how a teenage ghost becomes infatuated with George Sand. Uh, this sounds so fascinating. I'd not heard of this novel before, but I really need to read it now. Best of Friends by Camilla Shamsi. This is uh, a novel about two girls uh, who grow up together in Karachi and are, are best of friends, uh, but decades later um, they've both moved to England. Uh, they're both very powerful women but living very different lives from each other, so charting the, the progress and uh, difficulties of that friendship over time and between different nations. I've not read this novel yet. I've, I've enjoyed re reading Camilla Shamsi in the past, so I keep meaning to get a copy of this book. Bourneville by Jonathan Coe, a novel which is set in a suburb of Birmingham, England, uh, where there's a famous chocolate factory and it follows the lives of uh, some people that work with um, or whose lives are affected by this chocolate factory and this whole suburb smells of chocolate, which is such an enticing thing to make the, the subject of a, a 
novel, and uh, I've not read this book yet. I've read uh, Jonathan Coe in the past. Really enjoy his his fiction, how he gives a broad view of society over time, as well as telling intimate, uh, psychologically rich uh, stories of different characters. I uh, like his book, uh, The Windshaw Legacy, um, or it's also under known as uh, What a Carve Up. Um, I'm not sure why it has two different titles, but uh, but yeah, that was such a great novel. Night Crawling by Layla Motley. How is this author so young and wrote such an amazing novel? It's it's an incredible work of fiction um, for for an author that is that is so young. Uh, it's so poetic and powerful. How it captures the life of a teenage girl living in California under very desperate circumstances, uh, who has to walk the streets in in order to support herself and her brother, uh, but uh, then runs in with the police and uh, and gets involved in this very complex, uh, dangerous situation and uh, but finally wants to stand up uh, for what is right and the difficulty of that, how it charts that journey uh, is is harrowing uh, but so beautifully written and such a tremendous novel. Now here is the cheat because there are two novels by Cormac McCarthy which have been grouped into one um, which is understandable because they're two books in the the same series they were published right after each other so there's the passenger about a jet which um, crashed into the ocean and about a salvage um, mission to find out what happened to this jet there's also Stella which uh, charts the journey of a, of a young woman um, in a psychiatric facility trying to understand her existence. Uh, so I've not read um, these books yet, but uh, like I mentioned before, I've enjoyed um, seeing the bro lit community come out and be so excited about this title. And, and I say that in a very endearing way. Uh, but we, we all know, uh, you know, this group of readers of, of very earnest men that sit in front of shelves of like Thomas Pynchon and Dostoevsky, great writers of the canon. And now the great Cormac McCarthy has brought out two new novels and all of these men are so excited. I, mean, I guess I'm part of like this community as well but I don't really think of myself as, as one of them but uh, yeah I just I just find it very funny. Shrines of Gaiety by Kate Atkinson. This novel set in 1920s London in the seedy nightclubs of Soho and a woman who's known as the queen of these nightclubs um, who's very successful and her ambitions uh, for her children. So those are all the fiction titles but just after this um, they've also sneaked in some other novels uh, because they have an audiobook um, selections uh, they're their top recommendations of the year and one of those books is The Seven Moons of Molly Almeida one of my favorite novels of the year and it makes me really eager to go get uh, this audiobook version of it and um, when I first read this in the summer there wasn't an audiobook of this yet but now it's on the Booker Prize an audiobook has come out and it'd be so wonderful to listen to uh, the the story of a war photographer um, who has just died and trying to find out who his killer is over a set period of time. It is such a dramatic and wild and dark and disturbing story uh, but also really brilliant. I, I just love this book. So yeah, hope to listen to the audiobook at some point. There's also an audiobook of Paul Newman's memoirs uh, which is narrated by Jeff Daniels and draws upon interviews with uh, dozens of people that knew Paul Newman. Um, so discussing his life as an actor and as a philanthropist. And there is the audiobook of Trespasses by Louise Kennedy, a novel about a young Catholic woman living in Belfast in the, the 1970s uh, who is a teacher and um, she works part-time in um, the pub that her family owns and uh, she has an affair with a married man who is a Protestant. Um, so following that dramatic tale and I'm actually reading this at the moment and I'm listening to the audiobook um, which is wonderful because it's read in this uh, with this Irish accent um, so it's uh, great to, to have that although I do have a bit of trouble understanding it at, at 
some point, so I have to go back some times and, and re-listen to it. Um, but it's wonderful to hear, you know, in, in the, the authentic accent. Um, but then also when I'm home, I'm reading the physical copy of this book. So sort of combining that reading experience. There's also a section for literary nonfiction, uh, best books of the year. And within that is the biography Super Infinite by Catherine Rundell. Uh, this is an account of the life of John Donne, who was kind of a cult poet of his time, but also a really uh, famous figure um, that uh, huge flocks of people would come to listen to his speeches, but also his poems were kind of passed around amongst people and uh, they evolved and changed as they were, they were passed around uh, amongst people. Um, such a, a fascinating story um, and such a, he had such a wild life um, and it is so beautifully written. This also recently won the Bailey Gifford Prize for nonfiction. There's also a top fiction in translation section and one of the books listed in that is Knights of Plague by Orhan Pamuk, uh, the winner of the Nobel Prize. This great big epic novel set in the early 1900s on a fictional island called Mingaria, a part of the Ottoman Empire, and it is such a dramatic story. I just read this book. It is so absorbing and thrilling and mysterious. There's a lot of mysteries and intrigue in this novel, but also fascinating in how it looks in the, the crumbling of an empire and, uh, and the, the clash between different cultures during a time of crisis. And uh, yeah, such, such a thrilling read. Really recommend this. Really worth the time. And finally, I want to mention another nonfiction title because they also have an environment section. And in that is The Tree Line by Ben Rawlins, which is all about the Arctic tree line, which is permanently covered in snow, uh, grows very uh, slowly, uh, but uh, is massive and so important to the ecology of our planet in a way we don't realize because we very few people travel up to this area of, of the world. Um, so yeah, so fascinating. This was also um, shortlisted for the Wainwright Prize um, earlier this year. Um, uh, an award for nature writing and environmental uh, books. Um, so yeah, so those are uh, the books on the FT's list. Um, yeah, there, there are many more in these different sections. Um, but yeah, this just gives you a taste of this best books of the year list. So let me know if you've read any of these books, if you're interested in reading any of them now, or if you have any other recommendations you want to make as your top picks of the year. Please let me know about that in the comments below. But I hope you're doing well, reading good things, and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.